Hey, it's Megan. Welcome back to another dollar store DIY. This time we are doing DIYs that can be used pretty much year round. And they are the type of DIYs that someone's gonna come over to your house and they're gonna ask you, where did you get that? They're not gonna ask you how you made it. All right, we're getting started like right now. For this first DIY, you only need two to three of these candle holders from Dollar Tree. I love these because they're ceramic, not plastic. Get some super glue or you can use E6000, whatever your preference is, no big deal. Pair that up with some hot glue for an immediate hold and then just stack them together. Then Dollar Tree carries this all-purpose caulk, but you can buy this like anywhere. Just make sure it's paintable. Put it around the edges. Use a dry paper towel to wipe it away. Then go back with a damp paper towel and that'll kind of like smooth out any of the cracks. We're going for like a seamless look here, y'all. Then just make sure to let your caulking dry all the way. I let mine dry overnight. Um, I guess just follow the manufacturer's instructions. Optional, use an old candle lid to give your base some extra height. Super glue that bad boy on and these are gonna be some amazing candlesticks. Really happy with how these turned out. I made two, one with two candlesticks, one with three, and then you can just spray paint it or paint it the color of your choice. And for like two to three dollars, two to five dollars, maybe less, depending on what you have, you have some great candlesticks. I mean, no one will ever know these came from the Dollar Tree. Huge, bulky, girthy candlesticks. I probably could practice getting the caulking more smooth, but totally happy with how they turned out. And we're on to the next one where all you need are two of Dollar Tree's 14 inch wreath forms. Take one of your wreath forms, trace it out on some scrap cardboard, some poster board, whatever you have on hand, and then take some pliers and remove the outer circle of the wreath. I removed the inner circle, but I'm gonna save that for a different DIY. I was originally going a different direction with this DIY. And by the way, you do wanna leave the little vertical pokey pieces on the wreath form. Then Dollar Tree twine or wire. I almost said wine because <laughs> I can't speak. And you're gonna use the vertical pokey pieces as a guide so you can tie the wire from side to side and get it totally even and then just kind of eyeball the middle so when you're done it's gonna look kind of like a wagon wheel then go back with some dollar tree raffia and we are going to wrap all the way around the outside of the wreath form so we're not wrapping the inner part of the wagon wheel looking thing. We're not making a wagon wheel, by the way. I'm just trying to use that as a describing word. Basic tape, wrap it around a few times, and then the trick to using raffia is to spray it down. The wetter, the better, it works out great. Wrap it all the way around the outer part of your wreath form. And if the raffia is wet, you can just twist it in place and it really won't go anywhere, so you don't need to do anything with that yet. Then remove the vertical pokey pieces. <laughs> just stay with me. I promise you this DIY, it, it's totally, there is a method to my madness. Just trust me. Trust me or, or skip ahead and you'll see. Look, super glue and that will hold the raffia down. Then take your cardboard, your poster board, whatever you used and duct tape that to your wire or twine. And this does not have to be pretty. This will be covered up. This is just for support. You have a few options. One, you can take some braided raffia, like I was originally gonna do, or you can use some Dollar Tree rope, or Amazon has great prices on rope. I got this 100 feet for $5. Unfortunately, the prices change like every day. Although I did leave a few other options for you linked in the description. Now, if you do wanna use DT's rope, they come in different sizes, so I did the math, and here's how many packs you'll need for each foot size. <laughs> you feel me on that? I don't know why they keep on changing the sizes on us. Then all you have to do, whatever you're using, raffia, rope, yarn, it doesn't matter. Just start gluing in the middle, wrapping and rolling. That's all you have to do, no special method. And when you get to the end, snip it off. Then we are going to take our second wreath form we're gonna remove the largest ring and the vertical pokey pieces. We're not making a wagon wheel and just wrap that with raffia. That's it. No special method, nothing. Dollar Tree sells the larger binder rings. They are two inches. You'll need four packs of these. More of our raffia, but not a new pack. We're using the same pack of raffia here, y'all. And we're wrapping this the same way. A little bit of basic tape, 
wrap it around a few times, spray it with water, and then just keep wrapping. And by the way, I'm thinking probably shower curtain rings, or if you wanted to use these smaller Dollar Tree binder rings, that would work too. And because the smaller rings do come in larger packs, you would still need like four packs. You feel me? And actually we're only using 20 rings. So it's like four packs and then you will have six rings left over from another pack. I don't know, is my math off? Anyways, four packs, 20 rings. One strand of raffia or like three little strands of raffia will cover like one binder ring. Then some super glue. You can use Dollar Tree's brand too. And the super glue on the raffia is like hardcore, hard as wood. You can knock on it super strong when it dries. Then you're just gonna start connecting your rings. You could connect all your rings at once right now. So all 20 rings. I did not because I was not 100% sure how many rings I would need. Although I will say, I think it was easier to just connect four to six rings and then connect them all together at the end. And then just snip off your hangover, leftover, raffia, whatever you wanna call it, and that's what it looks like. Now, this is totally optional. You can use cold coffee, not hot coffee, because we used hot glue to hold these together to stain them. And here's the difference between non-stain and stained. I like the stain version. Actually, I end up mixing the different raffia tones, so you'll see what I mean. Hot glue your binder rings to your large base because we're going to start calling this our tray. Now this is our tray. Go back and just wrap your raffia pieces to connect your binder rings. Lord have mercy. I hope you're still with me. At least you can definitely see what I'm doing. And then just snip away anything that's left over. And actually, this would be a really cool tray just like this. You could totally stop here. But we're going to go that extra step of awesomeness. Add on our top wreath form that we wrap in raffia. And here's what I wish I would have known from the get-go. Raffia is so easy just to wrap around. No glue is needed and just tie it off. I wish I would not have underestimated the strength of raffia and just tied the rings to the bottom. But hey, this whole tray was a learning experience. I made mistakes. Hopefully you don't have to. And it looks cool like this. Personal preference, I did go back and add the non-stain raffia in between the rings just to give it, I don't know, I like the different type of tones. And then more super glue because I'm telling y'all, this makes it like super strong. So for 17 to $13, depending on how you do this DIY, you can make an awesome tray. I do regret the bottom. I wish I would have used a Dollar Tree placemat instead of a poster board because it would look better. But all that said, totally dig, totally love this tray. It really is strong as is. You see this, picking this up, Mr. ZZ Top is getting uh, pushed around, but he's gonna live. It can hold a lot of weight and it is strong and sturdy, especially if you use super glue. So I hope you can make your tray exactly how you want it because I had so many struggles with this, but I do love it. And we're on to the next one, which is super simple. Two of Dollar Tree ceramic soap pumps. Unfortunately, the tops are plastic now. They do make a white on white, so white pump, white ceramic thing, but I wanted a black pump. So I got the black ones and I just spray paint at mine white, but Walmart does sell 97 cents spray paint. You could totally use that too, or just buy the white pump, whatever you gotta do. I made a free printable. And as always, when I make a free printable, I share it with you in the description and it's free. Dollar Tree's spray adhesive, which is awesome. Kind of like my new favorite glue besides just plain old glue stick. Use that, put it onto the pump. Now to keep this from bleeding or, you know, getting smudged when you get it wet, just spray it with some clear spray paint. And that's it. So really, you don't even have to do my printable. Find any printable you want. Get some clear spray paint, which can be picked up. Mine was from Dollar General for like $3. That'll save the label and you can get it wet. And I love the way these pumps turned out. Super sleek looking, modern farmhouse. But hey, customize them to your style. Now we're gonna make a little tray. I I've used these trays before. They're the decorative cake trays from Dollar Tree. Another Dollar Tree candlestick more super glue and hot glue, but you can always use E6000. And then paint it the color of your choice. I'm using what I had on hand, so Rust-Oleum White, and boom, that's over and easy, super simple, two to three dollars, depending on what you have on hand. And this is great for your bathroom, your kitchen, seasonal decor. We got fall coming up soon, y'all. 
and just a super simple, cheap tray. For this next DIY, we're making another tray. I'm another candlestick and I'm actually reusing a DIY I made over a year ago where I took one of these Christmas cookie holders, I don't know what they're really called, and just used the lid, traced out some foam because this plastic is really flimsy. You just need something to give it more uh, strength. Cut that out and push that onto the bottom with some hot glue and then just filled the sides in with hot glue too. After that, because this is plastic, anytime you're painting plastic, if you apply Mod Podge beforehand, that will make it where your plastic painted, your painted plastic will not chip. You can also do that after you paint too. So I just use black spray paint, but you can use whatever you want. And for $2, we have a super cute tray. By the way, Sarah Jane from Chic on the Cheap, she made a DIY using the bottom of one of these containers. So if you're wondering what to do with the bottom, go check her channel out. I'll have that video linked at the end or in the description too. And this is probably my favorite little tray, by the way. Now we have another DIY, super simple, and you have so many options. You can use one of Dollar Tree's tags, one of these shadow boxes, or heads up Dollar General at the end of Christmas and the end of fall. They have 90% clearance. So I got that little tag for 50 cents. I also got one for fall for 50 cents. I think this looks better, but like I said, you can totally use Dollar Tree, one of the larger tags or one of the little shadow boxes. Just paint over your sign. Then free printable, I did not make this, but I will link it for you in the description. Kitchen conversions. I printed mine off in a five by seven to fit my tag. And then I just cut out the areas I did want and left behind the pieces I didn't want. I just took that, copied it onto my printer. That way I would have room on the sides and the top to fit my wooden piece. And you'll do the same for yours. Make sure it just fits whatever box or tag you are using. Trace that out and then cut that out. Now, if you're using a tag like mine, you're gonna have a hole in the middle or something that protrudes from the top. Just push down the paper with your finger, circle around it, and it gives it, you can see where you need to cut out. So that way you can get a more precise cut, a nicer looking DIY, cut that out. And then all you have to do, glue stick and glue that bad boy down to your tag. Now, I love this DIY because it's so easy and it is functional. So this is something we legit use in our kitchen uh, when we're cooking. I don't have this stuff memorized. My daughter uses it. Oh, by the way, don't worry about getting it perfect because you can take a nail file or sandpaper to remove any hangover paper. So one to $2, 50 cents if you get these tags after Christmas or after fall. And these tags make great DIYs for a billion and five things. And they also make great gifts. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are ready for some fall DIYs. I will catch you next time, my friend. So much love to you.